This is the Appliance Alliance Podcast, where we are elevating the appliance industry, one podcast at a time. Hi, guys, and welcome to the Appliance Alliance Podcast. I am your host with the most equipment. Zach Ryder, owner of Gordon's Appliance Repair in Chicagoland, Illinois. Alongside of me, just like every other week, the man with the plan. He really needs no introduction because he's the more famous one. But I still give him one every week anyway, Mr. TK Cousins. What's going on, everybody? Um, another, another episode, and this one is going to be a doozy. Um, I've actually been looking forward to this one since we'd had the idea of the podcast. I was excited about this one because, um, when I first learned about this person, um, I was over at the appliance Boot Camp Facebook page, uh, and I've been following Michael Sneed for, for a long time. Um, he's been an inspiration to me. Um, but people would always talk about this person. I'd always hear this person's name, but I didn't know who they were. Um, and I was, and I was very intrigued. And then I looked up her, her YouTube and I checked her out and I was like, man, this lady is awesome. So, um, y'all already know who I'm talking about. I've given up enough information, but we have tonight with us, Miss Ward, everybody, or Miss Ward, introduce yourself to everybody. Hey, what's up? They call me Miss Ward and I, you know, I like it, you know, put a little, put, you know, as, uh, as, uh, my boy, uh baby say put respect on my name <laughs> it puts a little respect on my name miss ward so i really appreciate it and um i, I it, it kind of makes me feel a little special <laughs> but uh you know i just roll in appliance repair i'm one of those people that celebrates the differences and diversity that we have in america and in appliance repair and in the trades i've always been into that so uh that's who i am miss get it done So, um, you, you were sharing a little bit in the pre-roll, um, you came from the automotive industry. What, what were you doing in the automotive industry? Well, what I did in automotive was I managed, uh, regions and different states. I, I managed, uh, service departments and, and facilities that in the aftermarket and in, in the dealer market. So I work with BMW, Mercedes, Maserati on the dealership side. And then on the other side, I work with the big brands like T uh, Tire Kingdom, NTB, Pep Boys, all those guys. And what I specialize in is the service side, basically uh, the technicians, their ability to repair vehicles, to stay trained and up to speed. So this was an easy transition for me because, you know, it's mechanical. And when it's mechanical and then you have some intellect, watch out and don't be able to manage technicians, you know, like, you know, you're practically re-raising grown folks, you know, your mama, your daddy, your pastor, your sister, your brother, you know, you know how it go. Right. Right. So it was a great fit. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, how long have you been in the appliance repair industry? Uh, maybe about a year and um, a couple of months because I started, I took my first course in November of 2019. While I was in the class with Michael Sneed, I actually set up my LLC, my business and everything. I um, did everything online for the state of Florida. Then I, of course, uh, commissioned, a take, uh, commissioned a graphic designer to take care of all my um, websites, things of that nature, because I have a very strong business acumen. So everything was basically set up SEO wise, things like that. All this was happening while I was in the three day course, you know, because my mind works that way. I couldn't get away from my job because I was in the kind of work I did. I was a hands on manager where I would manage regions and areas and groups. And because I was hands on, I was on the road roughly 300 to 315 days a year. So I was the type of person that managed regions, but I didn't manage from my corporate office. I would always be in those markets growing and developing the staff because I was very clear in order to maintain morale and performance, you have to support your staff. You have to be present, not just in word, but in deed. That's why I was extremely successful on that side of the world because I actually gave a damn and I was present. 
what if I can throw a question out there real quick? When you first took the the um, appliance boot camp, because I know we, I know, I noticed in the um, chat box that we have some appliance boot camp alumni. Um, so shout out to the appliance boot camp. But when you took that course, was that in? Per How does it work? Is it in person or do you do it online? I know he's doing it online during COVID, but is it in person as well? Yeah, it's in person. Like how I was first exposed, I was watching the Mike Sneed, and I was really impressed with his ability to take his cash flow and invest it in investments. So. So I've always been a student of people who not only uh, manage money discreetly, but you know the what they we like to call the next door, the million on millionaire next door. You follow me? The guy that's making millions of damn dollars and nobody knows it, and they have all these low key investments while everybody out here struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, no matter how much money you make. So Mike's one of those guys. So because I couldn't get away from my job, I was trying to get into a class. I actually bought the online course and then I went to the class. And when I got there, Mike was like in shock, first of all, that I did both. And I mean, he offers it that way now, but I've always been light years ahead because I knew the value and the vision. So I'm one of those people that implements. You feel me? I don't wait on people to do stuff. I just handle it. So once I did that, I, you know, once I got the hands on in the hands on class, he gives you, uh, everything from setting up the business, blood, you know, all those things. And, and then the, what's so funny when I was in the class, they thought I was a mole because I didn't act like everybody. Like I was in the back on, um, I had my surface open on one side, my laptop on the other. And I was actually setting up my businesses and handling things. And then I would get up and pull a tub out the washer or whatever and go back and sit back down. And so here I am female, I'm banging out the tools like it's nothing, but I'm a technician by trade. I come from automotive. So, you know, it's just like every time I go work on some people be like, where did you get that from? Uh, from automotive, like stuff as simple as this right here, which is like my neck lights. Now all the guys buy them because they go around your neck and I, that's how I work. But this comes from automotive. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, those are cool. That's what I'm talking about. I don't about. have that. Don't don't show me a cool tool because I'll be buying it tomorrow. I'm a flashlight junkie. I might just have to be I buying love, me one of those too. I love how you I love how you talked about your transition from automotive to appliance and what and 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 bringing those different um, things you learned over because I've been following you for a while. I don't watch every single video you make, but I watch a good portion of them. And I love how you're always talking about taking what you learned in the corporate world and applying it now that you are the owner, you are the boss. And and that's just, it, it's so much wisdom that you can get get from that. And um, I, I appreciate your wisdom that you give. Um, and I know that you know, over the, the short time that I've been following you, there's been just a massive amount of knowledge dropped on your YouTube channel. Do you mind if we shout out the name of your YouTube channel for anybody that might not be a follower? All right, go ahead and let them know where to find you on uh, YouTube and all that good stuff. Yeah, my YouTube channel is Solid Steps to Wealth. And the reason I started that is because people would come to me like from for everything from like business credit, how you know, because before I left my job, I, I had started building my business credit because I was very clear that I was going to run my business like a business, that I was not going to go bankrupt because I was using my own personal money. But, you know, that's a whole thought process and a structure. So, of course, I developed my business credit and foundation. So, and then on top of that, I have multiple companies. So when I develop my company, I have a holding company and the subsidiaries because that's how my brain works because I needed to make sure I had tax shelters in place. I also opened my companies in opportunity zones, you know, not just urban, but also rural. Like my whole thought process is very different. And so it's that way because whatever move I'm making is not for the day, it's for generations to come. So in order for me to plant those seeds properly, I have to move accordingly. That's awesome. I, I love the yeah. go fast and just break crap. Um, I have to keep it clean for YouTube. Uh, but I love that go fast and, and, and break it all mentality. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's my so favorite kind of mentality. That, you know, that's kind of, you know, my thing is because, you know, a lot of people, they'll hear me throw out all this multicultural and ghetto slang and ebonics and stuff, but that's really a facade because I need to throw them off the scent. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have to throw them out. I need to let their ignorance <laughs> let the underestimate me. And I, li- I live to do that. I've done that my entire career. Because you can imagine me walking. Here I am. I'm a master. I mean, I, I started in. At jo- I, I started with a dual degree engineering class, a course with, between a historical black college, Clark Atlanta University, and Georgia Tech. And here I am. Full scholarship, five year, full ride, and I'm working a job. I'm going to school. I'm doing my thing. SAT score is fourteen seventy five. You know what I mean? Like, but at the end of the day, people are so ignorant. They have no clue. So here it is. It's like I moved so quickly in my corporate positions because people underestimated me. And when my numbers prove the point, because you know men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. And that's how I move. Like every day I'm looking at my key performance indicators. I'm looking at my most profitable areas and I'm focusing on that. So like, this is how deep my game is. This is how, why people be hating on Miss Ward. Like right now I got three compressor jobs going on. I have my subs, the subs that I trained and got them at the point to do it my way. I pay those guys 150 a pop. A pop because that's all they want. It's more than what they make on their morning jobs. To do a damn compressor job, I'm cl- I'm clearing twelve to fifteen hundred dollars on. Give me a break. But I'm a businesswoman. You gotta yeah, realize what... when I get that apartment, yeah, exactly. I take care of their travel fees. I take care of everything, you know. And then if it's something like a built-in, of course I pay them more. But at the, you know, when I first got in the game, people were charging me three fifty, four hundred dollars to do the work. And because I'm a beast, you know what I mean? Like I multitask, I'm very clear that why would I go in here and weld something when I can have five of these jobs going on at the same time and I can go around and do diagnosis, diagnosis, uh, diagnostics and just pass the jobs on. Like I'm built that way. Like my brain is like a manufacturing plant. So I'm thinking, how can I move this game? And then what can we work on? Okay, that temp sensor, that's going to be low recall. You feel me? Like my brain thinks about that. Where can I put my money at? You know, you know, like, and what do I need to focus on? Like you always hear me talking about this thing about drives.com. I fix drives.com. Somebody's going to do it. Just like I fix iPhones. You feel me? It's the same concept and people don't understand. You can move in volume and you can move precise. It's all in how you move. You just got, I've learned in 2021, keep folks out of my business because they don't think like me. So they will discourage and, and put those old right, school right. Uh, shackles on, you know, try to put them on my feet. Man, that was 400 years ago. Let it go, bro. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. be able to do it. Yeah, well, I, I, what would you what would you say to someone just getting in the industry? Cause we've got a lot of new people at the appliance Alliance. Um, not everyone is built the way you are. So the average Joe and I, and I'm not, I'm not saying that there's no one else that can do what you've done, but the average Joe getting into appliance repair doesn't have the business mentality that you do. Um, what would your, top advice be to someone brand new coming in that is as green as can be as far as business goes well first thing i would do is tell them to keep to do the main thing that most people don't do which is keep it simple stupid and don't over analyze first of all if i could do it all over again between me and you i work on dries ovens and stoves that's it reality you know i would have a, a branch just for that those are the simplest and the easiest to work on and then I moved my game and then I would specialize like I'd have a special package for wall ovens. I have a special package for, you know, X, Y. And then I'm not touching the mealers and the decors. No, I'm going to let them cause, let them deal with them. Even though they're good, I'm trying to hit them down whirlpools that's been lasting 900 years. You feel me? And I'm going to go in there with everything I need, need yeah. to handle it. You feel me? Like, and, and I think when someone comes into the game, they need to start with the simplest and they need to excel at it to the point they can do it in their sleep and then learn how to extract the be- the most out of it. Like for instance, everybody knows the dryer game is on point. 
Well, you know what they need to do. If I started, I would do dryers only, and then I would specialize. I would definitely focus on the gas dryers. Cause see, in South Florida, people scared of propane and gas. They like they about like I go to convert. Y'all don't send me to hell. Not yet. Not you, TK. I go to do a conversion, an LP conversion on a damn Samsung. I charge the customer three fifty four hundred dollars. Now you and I both know up north that would never happen. But down here, right. Not People are afraid of, and then they get that the damn customer got the kit. Like, really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. I'm serious, but I go into areas. See, that's what made me so successful because when I started my business, like right when I left my comp- the company I worked for, because I had one of these bougie-ass uh, VP, senior vice president said to me, because, um, you know, with COVID, we were all pulling together to cover some things. So, you know, we worked three to four days a week to cover certain locations, blah, blah, blah. So I told him, I said, look, I said, I can give y'all ass three days. And, you know, and my, the, the president was like, shit, Shell's three days is like somebody else's three weeks. Cause they know how I grind. Key to key, I'm nonstop. You feel me? And then I'm doing multiple jobs. And the reason why I'm built that way is because when I first started with these companies on the corporate side, they always gave me the worst assignments because it was for me to fail. But you know, failure is not an option for this chocolate chick. You understand what I'm saying? If I fall, I fall forward. So all it did was taught, taught me resourcefulness. When you don't grow up with nothing, you know how to make it, make something out of nothing. So I would go in and come up with this. And to this, to this day, people think it's ingenious. To me, it's just survival. See, like I'm at that point now in my life where I'm trying to learn how to get out of survivor mode and get into thriving and striving mode. You follow me? And that's personally and professionally. But, you know, if I was starting out, I would focus. You know, I have to pull myself back to what the damn question was because, you know, I'm that sister. But um, <laughs> the um, I would definitely start. I don't, hey, I don't remember. I was just sitting here listening. <laughs> just keep going. It's fine. Yeah. So the dryers is where I would start. I would start with dryers and I would learn the schematic game and I would learn and all that stuff. And then I and would transfer that. that yeah, and the same thing with ovens and stoves. I'm like, come on, people. We all know if the damn stu- oven is not, if the broil and the bake ain't working, we already know what time it is. You feel me? Like, come on. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's simple to us, yeah. you know, but it's just like me. I dove right into the Samsungs. So, you know, I was throwing the auxiliary heaters on and stuff. People was looking crazy. I'm like, look, Miss Ward does not believe in recall. Period. Don't call me back because I, 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 and then on all my jobs, I give a three-year warranty. And people are like, what? <laughs> I give three years because I charge a premium price. And if I do have to come back, I got so much cushion for the pushing. <laughs> you feel me? So I'm good. Let me ask you a quick, uh-huh. let me let ask me you a quick question about that. Because I've heard you mention that before. That before. Mm-hmm. So, that's so that's on every, every repair, repair you do, you there's do a three-year three warranty? Year warranty? Except for my LGs. My LGs, I give five. But you gotta realize, I got okay. a guy doing a Kenmore job right now. Customer's chart is twelve seventy five. The the damn compressor cost me two forty six. The dryer cost me forty two dollars, and the chick gonna charge me a buck fifty. What's my name? Say it again. Mm. <laughs> I gotta go down to Florida and hook up and hang out with Miss Ward. <laughs> I'm telling you, you ain't man. Kidding. And people come one ride the, with me and they freak out when one they ride of the, with me. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that I've I, I've noticed you really have utilized in your business is subcontractors. Um, are you planning on being exclusively subcontractors? Are you planning on hiring employees eventually? Um, what's your What are your thoughts about that? Okay, well, this is the reality. Okay, everybody needs to understand that Amazon, Task Rabbit, all these things have changed. It. We are in a gig economy. If you don't move with the gig economy, you're not going to survive. So prime example, you look at Nana, you look at all these places, all these, what is it, pools, all these different companies, these lead companies or these companies, they develop these companies and then they hire these subs to go do the work. You know, there's a chick that's a friend of mine, even yep, though I'm yep. about to beat her down when I see her, Erica Williams, Classic Climb Blog. Uh, she's one of my mentors and I belong to a group. She said that's called the rise of the 20%. 
And she goes through different programs and situations where you, you know, take your money and make it work for you. And she deals with real estate, but she also deals with service businesses. She has a course out called uh, Middleman to Millions. Now, in that course, she talks about how she had a painting company and how she did was hire subcontractors. She collected the money and made them wear, wear basically uh, the company shirts. You feel me? Because and she de dealt with painting. And painting is one of those things that people make a killer. You know any painters, you know they're getting paid with little or less drama, little or no drama or issue. So they, her company focused on uh, handyman work and uh, something to do with fences. But I'm saying all that to say is, is that the only um, employees you need are the employees that handle the admin side. Maybe some technical support employees and that goes into the Epson glasses. I don't know if you ever seen, I have like three pairs of those. And those are the glasses that the techs use in the field. It comes back to the corporate office or wherever you are, you can remotely walk them through a job, that type of thing. Oh yeah, I saw those. That's, those, that's, are, those, are, those look pretty cool. Very high, Very high tech. Yeah, but see, at the end of the day, everybody, all these old, foggy, dragon ass people, they gonna be here in the dust. Leave their ass back here. Like my whole mindset is so futuristic. That's right. You know what I mean? I'm gonna let them have all that. You know because what it is is it's what I like to, you know. And I know somebody gonna get offended, but I'm gonna be me. You know the good old boys sit back and get comfortable because they lock so many people out, out of opportunities. And you know now that all that's threatened, it's threatened because you weren't willing to change. You know, I watch it every day. I watch mm. it every day. I watch yeah. people get upset where it used to be. It used to be, dude, this is 20, what? <laughs> you know, and at the end of the day, I just I just feel the only employees you need are management. Like, you look at places like Uber, all these startups, how they were started. They were started lean. They were lean startups. And the, the, what people don't understand is That's that. That's awesome. Mm, That's a really unique. Go ahead. That's a really unique approach to appliance. But think repair. about it. I, I, I really love the knowledge that you're spitting. It's it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, but it's a it's fact. Amazing. No, think about it. Now, let's look at it. Okay. Say you're an Uber driver, and right now they're raising hell, Uber, Lyft, all this because of the issues going on over there. But what people don't understand, why reinvent the wheel? You can have, dude, this game is so big. People don't understand. Like, my whole goal is to have to offer training for dislocated workers, just like you see how people can go sign up for IT training and like that basic A plus certification, all that, you know, entry level stuff. And the government gives them $5,700 per student. I mean, it's the same concept in appliance repair. You take people, you give them a skill, and then you got your own pipeline and you're getting paid on the back end as a nonprofit. Like what? Like it's that. This is what America's built on. Yeah, I gotta get that. I gotta get that set up. So we, we so can't. We, this board. We can't give it all to him, and we want you to come back. Okay. We can't give it. We all can't give it all to him in one all podcast. Right, I, got you. <laughs> I, 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 I do have another question. I, I want to push back just okay. a little bit, just because I know there's going to be people with the uh -huh. same, like the same uh -huh. question. Um, no, not that I think you're wrong, because I think that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh. um. So so as far as having subs, we get in Chicagoland, like if I was to go with a sub, I'm telling you right now, I, I would catch nothing but grief from customers. Yeah, well, I know why. Have you had, have you had pushback in having subs going out? Obviously, you've trained them. I mean, I, I, heard, I heard you say, like, you've trained them the way you want them, and this is how it's going to be, and you're going to do it this way because you represent uh -huh, me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But have you had pushback? No, because, you know, first of all, my subs know I will spank that ass, <laughs> number one. Number two, I have my original subs were already, they have their own businesses. They understand that we have an agreement. So there are sub people that work for me. I don't even show up. Now, there are other subs. I am always there. Like, I show up. I make sure everything's in order. Like, I had to spank somebody ass last night because, you know, here it is, man, this multi-million dollar crib. Where the hell is your, you know, I asked him because, you know, I don't want to break his manhood. You know what I mean? But I was like, look, do you need a blanket? Do you need this and that? So I went out to the truck, got, got some extra blankets, laid it on the floor, because, you know, you're welding. I'm not paying for this floor, bro, or this multi-million dollar kitchen. It's not happening. Customer just sold the crib, you know, and uh, 
30 days before moving out, the damn Kenmore got whatever, Kenmore Elite goes. Beautiful fridge. But we all know what time it is. So, you know, I had to show up and get the ching ching. <laughs> you know? But, um, you know, I don't have an issue with subs awesome. because I am really exacting and I don't sub with just anybody. Like, I'll get people who, like, my subs have been doing it for the, the, maybe, uh, the least has been about 13 years. My other, my lead sub is 35 years and he rides with me on the weekends. So we go out and roll together and do, st you know what I mean? So I make it fun when they're with me. Plus they have access to my trucks. Like I move like a real corporate situation. Like I had a, like I was telling TK, some lady in this Mercedes, like just jack, you know, hit my little 2021 Ford Transit. I'm already, I already got my new truck sitting there waiting on me in the morning. You feel me? But that's how you got to move. You got to move in such a way like a boss. B-A-W-S-E for those who don't know. <laughs> and you got to move that way so that when <laughs> you are changing things and making moves, like for instance, these guys want, they want to be able to control employees and what they don't understand. The employees of past are not the employees of today. That's why they have so many problems. These kids, you know, they don't have the work ethic and I'm not knocking them because they come, they're cut from a different cloth. They are stimulated differently. So you got to deal with them differently. You know what I mean? Like for instance, you're not going to be able to get a kid, the apprentice with you, who's going to be able to take the heat and work the way we work because we're cut differently. You know, and then you got to look at them and you got to decide, are you with like, I'm going to give you a story about the sub I got working out tonight. Let me tell you what this, and this happened between the sub and my executive assistant. So they both cost me money. I wanted to, I wanted to strangle everybody, but I had to keep it cool. So let me give you a prime example. We're using WorkEase, right? My favorite app. So I'm training my administrative assistant to handle WorkEase. So she's assigning the text to the task. Well, she assigned him to a task that he wasn't supposed to go to. I went to the customer, checked it out, explained that LG offers. So the customer was going through LG to, you know, try to get some things done, you know, cause you know who to work with. Yeah, yeah, well, I ain't got to tell y'all, you know how to read customers. So you know what you want to deal with and what you don't. So I put the guy up on game and I, I gave him all the information for LG to contact to get LG to handle X, Y, and Z and that the tech will come out. Well, my tech was supposed to be going to do, and, and this is another thing in South Florida, we work together. He was actually supposed to be going to do a, a job somewhere else for one of my um, comrades who has a company up here. So I dropped the compressor and everything and the dryer off to his house. His ass goes and does it, guess where? To the guy who was going to LG. I called that guy, I said, yo, bro, why is my tech in there putting a compressor and you haven't paid me in there? I don't know. I thought he was, my, I said, bro, let me explain something to you. I wasn't born last night, but you, you better be glad I believe in Jesus and Jesus. Cause you, ooh. <laughs> so the tech had installed this. He already installed oh, it and everything cause he's quick. And I called him. I said, he said, but how did I even get this address? So I'm looking at my executive assistant and I'm ready to kill everybody. I said, no problem. So I called my boy, my brother, my, uh, I call him Q, the quiet millionaire. He knows who the hell he is. I said, yo, bro, I'm going to absorb this. I said, I'm sending another compressor up with this guy. He's going to come take care of it. Don't worry about paying him or me. I got this. This how I So I had him handle it. But it was horrible. Like, the customer that was waiting on his ass had moved out. He was in a wheelchair waiting outside. Like, dude, it couldn't be worse. It could not be worse than you. But at the end, welcome to appliance mm. repair. It, it makes a man or a woman at you. But the, So the guy yeah. felt really bad. But you handled but it. You handled it. And so, and, oh, it gets better. So then he goes to do another LG, uh, Kenmore for me, and he doesn't put gauges on it because he wants to be, you know what? I'm going to just be me. Somebody going to be mad, but I'm going to just say what I would normally say. I'm not going to. Uh, he wants to be super Negro. That's what I call him. <laughs> so he goes and he doesn't put shit on there like he can damn take his finger and check the atmosphere and know what the damn pressures are and whether it's a damn restriction. I'm ready to wax that ass. So anyway, <laughs> he so he puts the compressor on. Come to find out, we got an issue in the Yoda loop, the loop that goes inside, the one that's quote unquote allegedly not repairable. So here it is. This lady done paid me $9.50 and we're going trying to correct it. Now he went back three times. And so I sent my leave with him. Come to find out that's the issue. Neither one of those other times could he find it. The lady was cool because I was on it. So I just gave a refund of $9.50. You feel me? 
But this is why I have to charge you. And I looked at him and then I put his ass on. I put him in timeout for two weeks. He came back back and I said, bro, let me explain something to you. You are representing my brand and my name. That trifling company you work for who tolerate that substandard bullshit you're doing will never work over here. Now, if you're going to rise with the cream, get your life together. If not, get the hell on. Kick rocks. So now we have an understanding. That is, that's that right. is, that is <laughs> awesome. But I wasn't always that so, person now. There, I, 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 I come from being a person where I only want to talk to your ass. Like, how could you be? But then you realize that you take the guy's been working for 13 years. He has an unbelievable work ethic and he's sincere. But no one's ever pulled his collar and held him accountable as a man. Now I have and now I don't have any problems. That's awesome. I, You know what? I, um. We're not giving the whole cow away because, uh, because uh, <laughs> we want to have you on okay. again. And this, this is so this has been so fun. This has been such a unique interview for us. I was telling our audience members. Normally, TK and I were kind of prodding the guests and we're kind of asking questions. We've just been sitting back here <laughs> absorbing the information. This has just been so much fun for us to have this. I can't even say conversation. I've just literally been sitting here listening like this is awesome. This is this is awesome there's no other word, no other I'm word really for it i'm really glad we were recording it <laughs> yeah for sure for sure for sure so miss ward we we just want to thank you and uh i'm gonna have to uh make sure i make my way down to uh florida have a have a visit because sounds like it'd be a fun yeah. time well i appreciate the opportunity anytime so, you guys want to yeah, we we're, we're gonna have, we're, we're gonna start doing uh, some uh meetups yeah that will be great. Appliance Alliance, Appliance meetup. Alliance meetups. I think the first, I think, the I think, first, one, of the I think first one, one of the first ones should be in Florida, and we can meet up with all the Florida. I know there's a ton of Florida people in yeah, Florida that yeah, are part of the group. Yeah, we got Mike so. Check. We got Brandon. Uh, that would be fun. We got, well, we the bunk. Yeah. We are the truth. Yeah, we. <laughs> So, so our plan so, so is, our yeah, plan uh, is for a couple, uh, a couple of us to roll out in the Denali and uh, be pulling the podcast trailer where I record on That's a regular awesome. basis. And, and uh, be able to sit down and, and do some in-person podcasts and go out to the bar and have a couple right. drinks after these great conversations. <laughs> um, it, it has been just an absolute, just an absolute pleasure, Miss Ward, so and I so look to forward to having you on again. Um, any, closing words any closing words for us today, TK? Um, um, well, I just want to thank first and foremost Miss Ward for coming on. Um she she always she's always there for me anytime like like when i tell you i have respect for this woman anytime i call her she's there um she's there to just lend an ear chat and or, or, or call me on my bs if, if i'm tripping so uh, i respect you for that i appreciate you i appreciate the um knowledge that you bring um and i just really uh look forward to meeting you one day because i keep you know seeing you on the screen or uh on a on a phone call but uh one day i'm gonna bring the whole family down there so that you can you can meet my squad and uh we'll hang out a little bit but just thank you miss ward i really respect you and i appreciate your time uh, no problem man i'm gonna say one last thank thing, you so man. much miss ward i'm gonna send y'all a shout out from where i come from Rule number one, let your haters be your made of motivators. And go get it, y'all. Keep stepping. I'll talk to y'all later, man. Appreciate right. it. I don't know Thank if you. I, can, I don't know if I can I don't know if I can wrap up any better than that. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't signed up for our Patreon, that has been live for a couple weeks now. Uh, make sure you check the link in the description below. There's also the Discord there. You have a chance to, just like our audience members today, come and kind of be a fly on the wall as we're recording these. So make sure you get out there and support us. And we are also going to have Miss Ward's YouTube channel dropped in the description below. Thank you, guys. And this is the Appliance Alliance signing off. Thank you.